Hello film family, welcome to today's beginner class. Today's beginner class is on how to shoot point and shoot film cameras. For this video I will be shooting with the Olympus Acura Zoom 105. Point and shoots are what they are. At the end of the day, they're meant for us to just point and then shoot. This is a beginner class, so with that in mind, I'm thinking of all of the questions and kind of confusing things that I experienced when I first started. Won't you be my pina colada girl? Hit that shit like pinata, yeah, couldn't see what How to prep the camera. For the battery, on most cameras like this one here, it'll say that it needs a CR123A, or depending on what region of the world you live in, is also maybe a DL123A. I happen to have one already. You just put it in, pretty simple. It even has an image of how the battery is supposed to go in in there. And to turn on the camera, all you need to do is slide that open and you'll hear that noise. You're welcomed by usually an E on Olympus cameras or a zero, usually blinking from these cameras. If for whatever reason the battery is not displayed here in the battery compartment, you can Google it and find it, but I always like to suggest to Google the manual. The manual will always have a more dependable and accurate description of what battery you need in the camera. So loading the camera, you will shoot with 35 millimeter film. First things first, I want to just quickly explain 24 exposures, 24 EXP there, equals the total amount of exposures that you get out of this canister. Exposures equals shots. Total number of shots is 24 from this specific roll. Most pointing shoots will load automatically. To do this, you will open the back door here and then you place the film canister on this side and then you feed the film all the way to the end. On all the point and shoots that I've shot with, there's a usually red or orange film indicator of how far you need to feed the film to. You do that, you close the door, and then the film will load all the way into the camera. The camera will always give you a clear indicator to, to know if the film was loaded correctly. This Olympus here will give you the number one to let you know that it's ready to take the first shot. I know with shooting film, sometimes you lose confidence that you are capturing all the shots that you are taking. It happened to me too. One suggestion or one thing to look for is if the number is advancing, let's say from two to three and three to four, then that means that the camera is happy. If the camera is happy, you should be happy too. Once you load the film in here, do not open the film door. If you open this film back, you have now ruined all of the shots that you had in that camera or had taken with that camera for that roll. When you open the back door, you expose the whole roll to light, meaning you will get all blank shots because it's negative film, light, equals black when scanning 35 millimeter negative film. How to shoot point and shoot. The concept of this for point and shoot is that you focus on your image first and then you capture it. You half press and then the camera will give you a green indicator light to let you know that you have locked that focus. If you need to, you recompose or move the camera wherever you want, keeping that single thing in focus, and then you snap the photo. Quick uh, review of the indicator lights. The green light on this camera notifies you that the focus is locked. The orange light on top notifies you that it will use flash. Overview on zoo cameras. So if you go to the W, that stays there because it's at its widest point. If you go to T, It'll zoom out, which stands for telephoto. And just wanted to quickly show you. So this is wide. And this is T for zoom telephoto. Side tip for zoom cameras. Zoom camera lenses are the sharpest at their widest point, which in this case, it is at 38 millimeter versus full length is at 105 millimeter. Point and shoots have flash modes. 
on this Olympus here, the flash is on auto. Auto flash means the camera will determine whether or not it needs flash for that scene or for whatever it is that you're half pressing or focusing on. For the most part, point and shoots do an accurate reading of the scene and will use flash when you need it and don't need it. There are flash modes where you can force it off. So it's on auto, we do one, two, you press the flash button twice and it turns off the flash. That means no matter what, it will not flash. So even if I put it in the really dark spot, it just uses a really slow shutter to shoot, but it'll force the camera to take the exposure without using the flash. This is actually really good for whenever you wanna be discreet, or let's say you know that you want a slow shutter speed when taking that shot. Other flash mode is that you can force the flash on. So usually you wanna do like a fill in, let's say you're taking a portrait and you wanna use the flash like indoors or just a dim place outside. From auto you would go one, two, three, and you're in fill in flash. And that means no matter what, even if there is enough light, it will shoot the flash. Point and shoots have a self timer mode or options. The self timer mode is particularly good if you wanna be in a photo like a selfie or a group photo where you wanna frame the shot and then run in and get in the shot as well. To activate it, you press the stopwatch looking icon and you press it once and that turns it on. You frame your camera and then you press the shutter button and it will release the camera into that 10 second mode. It will give you this orange icon to let you know that you have activated the self timer. It'll do 10 seconds. It'll blink as it gets close to the end and then take that shot, which is a neat feature. I use this feature whenever I want to take selfies with Kodak and there's no one else with us. Some more point and shoot tips. For sharper images with a point and shoot, I would suggest that you shoot with both hands instead of just one. This is just one handed, but for more stabilization stance, you would shoot with both hands. So you, this is the trigger hand, you hold it like that. You place this one on bottom, make sure you don't cover up the lens. You can sometimes cover up the lens without covering up the viewfinder. Let's say you half press, you recompose, take your shot versus the one handed. So another tip that you, when you take this shot, uh, try to not be moving. So that means even follow through. When you find that frame you want, you hold it. And I'm putting it here to my mic so you can listen to the camera, take the shot and hold your position until the camera is fully done taking that shot and advancing the film. So I'll give you an example and it's gonna go right now. Once you hear that the camera is no longer making noise, that means it took the shot and it advanced. This will help you end up with sharper images. My last tip is shoot until the camera rewinds all of the film back into the camera. Oftentimes people will see 24 exposures on the canister, take their 24th shot, and for whatever reason, accidentally open the back door or they'll go get their film developed and they'll give them the whole camera and then that employee will rewind the film for them. There is a rewind button here at the bottom. All automatic point and shoot cameras, when you get to the last frame, it'll tug and then rewind all the film, notifying the camera that that was the last shot. And then you can just take out that canister and then get your film developed. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into my first film photography beginner class. Please hit that like button for me if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. I post film related videos like this every single Monday about 7 a.m. Pacific time. If you have any questions or concerns, comment down below. The film community and I will definitely respond to you and help you out. And as always guys, happy shooting. Hey, did it not flash? Hey. <laughs>